Well, we are back with Charlie Stocker and Ruth from Hartford, Kentucky is on the phone. Good morning, Ruth. Morning, Ruth. Good morning. Uh, Charlie, I was wondering, uh, can you move? Good morning, Charlie. Good morning. Good morning. I could move my roses this time of year. Okay. Okay, what, what is your question? I'm sorry, I missed it. Uh, I was wondering if I could move a rose this time of year. Can she move, move a rose bush? You, you want to know if you can move your rose bushes this time of year? Yeah, that's yeah. right. Now, now, is an, now is a very good time to move your rose bushes probably a little bit better if you wait about a month. The point being, if you do move your rose bushes, water them in two days before you decide to move them. So what you're doing is those roots will take up all that moisture and they're hydrated, okay? Then transplanting them becomes a less of a situation for them. It's like, you know how you will hyperventilate before you uh, hold your breath underwater. Well, it's when you give them all of that extra water, it's like kind of a little of insurance policy before you transplant them. And when you do transplant them, use one third of the parent soil that's existing where the uh, roses are going in, one third of compost, of good organic rich compost, and one third sand. And use one cup of super phosphate with it, plant them at the same level that they were at, and you should have no problem. Charlie, are you working that superphosphate in the soil? If you're making that combination of new soil, old soil, and the superphosphate. What I would do is I would, I would dig it out, and I've got this soil that we call the parent soil. And I would mix a third of that with a third of sand, with a third of oh, the, the compost, yeah. and mix that one cup of superphosphate in with that. So you're this, just working it all in together. That's a very good point. Yeah. Right? That is a very good point. And then, obviously, water it in real good after you're finished the planting okay. process. Okay. Now, uh, is it when you've got older rose bushes, are those hard to dig up? Well, it's all according to how much you want to save them. Uh, a good rose should only have about five stems. And in the springtime, and we've gone into some videos on that, on exactly how to trim in the springtime and then later to maintain those roses on our Hay Garden Guy, Charlie Stocker, on, the, on our videos that we put out every day. But you should only have about five stems. And they should all be uh, open to where the inside of the rose is more open for air circulation and sun. So you ask me, can you transplant those big old roses? Well, hopefully, if you've trimmed correctly, you're only going to have about five stems to deal with. Oh, really? That's all you should have, yeah. Oh, that's so interesting. Well, Beverly from Madisonville is on the line. Morning, Beverly. Hey. Good morning. Uh, this is Beverly Matthews. And... Um Madisonville, and I used to have a garden center. Yes! Oh. Yeah, and, uh, and it's called Suburban. Yes! And I'm 81 years old, and I want to know about arugula. Mm. Arugula? Yeah. Okay. It's, a, it's really a cool season vegetable. Um, and you can actually, you know about arugula, you can plant it now, can you not? Uh, you can. It's a cold weather, a cold bad, weather. bad veggie. Yeah. And, uh, it's got a neat taste. And is it, is it, uh, and I'll ask you, uh, is it, it, it I, I assume it's very helpful. It's a, yeah, it's, it's a super green. You know, it's, arugula is a super green. Yeah. Okay. And so what's it's good. When you plant it now, how long before you get results? I have no idea. Probably it's about, been too long since, since I had a plant bed. Beverly, 40, 40 days. I think, you can have a, I think you can have arugula processed within 40 days from when you planted originally. And give us a call. Yeah. <laughs> Sherry Great from, talking with you. <laughs> Sherry from Fordsville is on the phone. Good morning. Morning, Sherry. Hey, Charlie. Hey, listen, this is the first time I've ever had a moon vine. Mm. And um, it said on uh, the Internet that they are poisonous. Now, is that just the seeds or is that the plants, flowers, uh, or what? And it's, it's, it's the uh, moonflower? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, I, I don't know that it is poisonous, uh, but I will look that up and I will report back to you uh, if you watch the show on Friday morning, uh, our, our, uh, our program at 8 o'clock on this same station, uh, I will report back 
uh, everything about the moonflower. I just don't know about it now. I've always heard that it was poisonous. Really? I have. I mean, I don't know if that's an old wives' tale mm, or mm, just, you know, mm, okay. garden lore. Yeah. And we have another call on the line. Jeannie? Morning, Jeannie. Hello. Hello. We would want to know what you do if you want to bring a fern in. If you want to bring a fern in, really, there's not a whole lot. Uh, if you want to bring it into the house, you want to keep it <clears throat> in an area where there is uh, a degree of sun, where you can read uh, a newspaper, and that's enough sun, that's enough uh, light for the uh, fern itself. Uh, other than keeping it watered, you may want to put it into a larger, no, you want to wait to do that. Uh, but just the average watering uh, on a weekly basis and fertilizing, back off on the fertilizing, but maybe once a month. And uh, you should be okay. Uh, for me, I put them in the basement. I do save a few Boston ferns and Miss Kim ferns, and we just put them in the, uh, put them in the basement and let them go totally dormant, and I'll water them once a month. It doesn't freeze down there, and then we can take them back out in the springtime, but we quarter them. So then I not only have one Boston fern or Miss Kim fern, I've got four. Look at you go. Charlie Stalker has the answers on our show, on Hey Garden Guy, on the website, on Facebook, and right here on this set. Thanks, Charlie. Thank you. We'll be back with more Local Lifestyles right after this.